All right, everybody, Nick here from Resonix Sound Solutions and Vanguard Automotive Design. Uh, today, I am going to show you how we do OEM integration in a more relatively simple vehicle. Um, we're going to use the built-in input RTA. I'm going to show you how to use that. I'm going to show you how to do summing. I'm going to show you how we set input gains. I'm going to show you how we do input mixing. And I'm going to show you how to actually tune it a little bit using the built-in RTA. We may also do the built-in uh, automatic time alignment. Depends if that works in this vehicle. Some vehicles or in some situations that doesn't really work because you need high frequency signal to the subwoofer. I'll see if I can sort of trick that into working. Um, but honestly, I doubt it. Um, but yeah, diving into it. You know, so this is a 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokee that features the Macintosh OEM system. Now, the Macintosh system features a 14-channel amplifier, and we had to grab all of the signal from that. We're using a Helix V12, which only has 12 high-level inputs, but we also used a MEC Analog In card to get two extra input channels. Uh, the mech being for the, the match products, but we adapted it into, you know, a Helix. Um, so yeah, 14 channels of input. Now in this one, I was going to show you more advanced OEM integration, but it actually turns out the system in this vehicle is very straightforward. There's no all pass filters that I was able to initially hear or detect. And it doesn't seem like there's really any timing discrepancies. Um, if it turns out there are, we will get into it. But I, I really, I, I don't think we'll need to do that. So for this one, we're going to keep it simple. I'm just going to show you basic setup, basic integration, uh, gain setting, you know, stuff like that. So um, yeah, let's, uh, let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is obviously I taught you how, you know, in my previous video, I taught you guys how to use the input uh, mixer. We already did that. Um, I already set this up, so I'm not going to go over that in this in this video. Um, so yeah, but from there, once we have our inputs all set up, you know, named, and our output channels all named, and everything dropped in and verified working, all of our output channels are verified to work. Um, the very first thing I do, again, besides doing all of that and setting crossovers, is we're going to set input gain, and with the V8 and V12 and some of the other DSP amplifiers, you can actually set input gain purely from the software in the newer models. You don't need to adjust anything on the hardware, which is really nice. So first thing I do, I actually mute all of the channels and that's just for now. And I link all of the channels. As you can see, everything up top is linked. How you do that is, you know, you just click in the little box and if it's lit up red, that means it's you know, enabled and linked, you know, I have them all read. So they're all enabled and all linked. So any adjustment I do, they will do together. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring, oh, time out, the car's shutting off on me. All right. So, sorry. What I'm going to do, link them all, and I'm going to drop the output to, you know, maybe like minus 10 or something like that. Just, just enough so I can like hear what's going on if I unmuted a speaker, but not enough, um, please car shut up. Oh my God. But not enough to where if I send too much signal, it's not going to overpower the speaker. You know, we want to, you know, we can go even lower if we want. We can go to like minus 12 and a half or minus 15. You know, let's go to minus 12 and a half. First thing I'm going to do. first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to unmute, you know, I usually do one of the mid ranges. I'll use the left mid range. And I actually play a song that I know hits zero dB in the recording constantly. Uh, the one I use is called Time for That by Kevin Gates. Personally, it's not my favorite song, but it is something that is realistic to how a sound system is used and abused. And, you know, that's how you want to make sure you're setting up your car. You could actually use zero dB, um, zero dB tones for this. I don't like doing that though, 
because tones are not dynamic. Um, you know, the, the, the songs, when they do hit zero dB, it's only for split seconds. And if something goes wrong on like on our initial setup or I accidentally click a wrong button or we forgot to set one of the input jumpers, you know, for the, for the voltage input type, um, I don't want to blow anything. So I like to keep it, uh, you know, I like to do this with a song that I know hits zero dB consistently. Now back to those input jumpers before you actually do all of this, you should be, you know, measuring the voltage and, um, you know, actually figuring out what your voltage ranges are for your input signal before you even do this. Uh, unfortunately we already did that and I did not get to show you for this video. I can make another video eventually going through that. Um, but you know, we have, we ended up having to take the subwoofer and dropping, you know, dropping that input load down to, uh, the higher voltage range in this amplifier, but everything else was able to stay on the normal high level range, which was from, uh, eight volts to 14 volts, something like that. Um, but yeah, so what you would do is actually you would, you know, measure the input voltage based off of uh, frequency response, and you would pick the, you know, the, the frequencies that have the highest output and use that to, you know, determine your input voltage range. But we're not going to get into that right now. I'm just going to show you how to, you know, do your input gain after that's all set and do your input equalization. I know since I'm not showing you that it's a little out of order, but it is what it is. I do not have access to giving you that content right now. All right, so we are in the DCM menu, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna open the advanced gain adjustment. Um, as you can see, like I said, you know, you can't use the standard gain setup when you're using mixed input voltage ranges. Uh, so we are stuck using the advanced gain setup. If you're using the standard, it's just one bar that, uh, that you can adjust, and then this little thing will light up uh, green, or actually I think it'll just light up red if it starts clipping. It adjusts all the inputs at once. It's very straightforward. Um, but the advanced gives you a little bit more flexibility. So let's go to it. And as you can see, for all of the high level inputs, we have, or each pair of high level inputs, we have a different bar. And for this bar, we can set different, uh, a different input gain for each input or each pair of inputs. So how I do that is, you know, you can use a zero dB tone, uh, like a zero dB sine wave based off of the frequency that you know, the factoring amplifier puts out as the highest voltage. Um, I don't like to get into that because sine waves are pretty destructive if you have something set up incorrectly, which, you know, we all do from time to time, accidents happen. And because of that, I, use, I like to use music that I know hits zero dB on a, like a normal basis, but it's not constantly zero dB. Because if anything is set wrong, I have a smaller chance of frying something or damaging something. Um, it's just a little peace of mind. So the track that I use is Time For That by Kevin Gates. Not my favorite song, but I do know there's parts of the song that are constantly hitting zero dB. Uh, and especially in the lower frequencies. So that's usually what... You know, and you can go over this with a wide array of songs or double check with sine waves after the fact. But I personally like to use music again, just in case there's a little bit of an accident. And we don't we don't want to damage anything, you know, that can in a shops in a shop environment, you know, damaging something when tuning can make or, you know, can break the whole job. You know, we have to call the customer. Oh, yeah, your car was supposed to be done today, but you know, this broke or it's, it's not ideal. So I like to be very cautious when setting inputs and input gain and input equalization, stuff like that. So yeah, um, like I said, time for that. What I'm going to do is I am going to go to the outputs. I'm going to, you know, just unmute one of them, just the mid range, left mid range. Um, like I said, I dropped them all down. So, you know, dropping all, them all down on the outputs is going to prevent the speaker from getting damaged um, and it isn't going to blast your eardrums apart. So, yeah, back to the DCM menu. Open this up again. We're going to play that. Uh, I'm going to play that signal, the song that I like to use. And from there, we can just go ahead and start, you know, adjusting until we get to clipping and then backing it down. It's that simple. 
So you can hear it playing now. And you'll see our input signal level bar is green. It's below clipping. And we're just going to bring up different inputs until we get to clipping. So the tweeters can go all the way up, which is typical. Uh, reason being, you know, high frequency content in music is, you know, not nearly as powerful as the low frequency content. So I'm just going to set it in the middle for now. Do it with the mid range, bring it up. I'm going to quiet part of the song. I'm going to go back. Um, Oh, mid range. Also, I could go all the way up. I'm just going to leave it in the middle for now. I'm going to start bringing up the mid bass. Mm-hmm. We're starting to hit clipping, so let's back it down. And then we're going to monitor. We're hitting clipping again. Let's bring it down again. Looks like we're good. Let's just watch it for a little bit more. Looks okay. Let's start doing the uh, the rears. I'm going to adjust the range of the song again because it gets to a quiet part. Oh. All right. All right, let's adjust the rears. So we got a little bit of clipping we saw. Let's just bring it to the middle. Mm-hmm. I'm almost willing to bet that's the mid bass. Let's bring that down. Yeah, that's the mid bass. We're going to drop that all the way down. All right. We're going to do the center. I'm going to start that uh, part of the song over again. Yeah, going to set this in the middle also. Now the subwoofer. Hmm. Looks like that is okay. Let's bring the mid-bass up again and see what happens. And let me... Let me pause this for a second. Um, I don't know why it just, when I muted it, I don't know why it lit up clipping. I think it just freaks out a little bit for a second. Um, But I do want to say, when doing this, you need to have your your radio all the way up to where, you know, your maximum volume is. In this case, we measure distortion out of the radio at 37 or 36 out of, uh, I think it goes up to 40. No, it goes up to 38. We measure distortion at like 36 or 37. So we are using 35 as our max volume. So I'm doing this with the radio setting at 35. Um, That's very important. You know, you don't want, and another note, you don't want any gain overlap on the input. Do not use minus 10 dB for setting inputs. That is only for setting outputs on the amplifier. It's not for inputs on a DSP. It's not for outputs on a DSP. It is not for inputs or outputs on something else in the signal chain. It is only for setting output gains on an amplifier where you want to, you know, do gain overlap with a, a minus 10 or minus 5 dB, you know, track. Um, that's just something else to note. All right. So we got this set up pretty good. Let's, uh, let's get this closed. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do the input equalization. <laughs> So from here, like I said, we already set it up. I already did this, so I already know what's going on. Um, But I did leave it a little bit not 100% ideal on purpose so I could show you some adjustments. So we're in the input-output menu. We're going to click this right up here. And from here, actually, and from here, um, let me remove all this. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to start with input A. This is our left tweeter. So now this is where I'm going to play our correlated or mono pink noise. And you could hear that in the background, hopefully. All we're going to do is we're just going to hit start, you know, drag and drop that input on and hit start. It's going to take a little while, unfortunately, but it is what it is. Let's uh, see what happens. All right, 
So we have our measurement here. This is the frequency response of the left tweeter. I am going to save it by clicking, by right clicking and saving that measurement. You see it turned a certain color. Let me pause this. So yeah, I wanna save this. And from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the left tweeter from the you know measurement, right click it. I'm gonna bring in the left tweeter. And we are going to once again play the mono pink noise. And the reason we're bringing in the right tweeter now and we're saving the left measurement is we wanna compare them and see if there's any differences from left to right, just as if we were tuning with a microphone and tuning the outputs. Uh, same thing we're doing on the input. So let's let's do that. All right, as you can see, left tweeter is pretty much identical. So now what we can do is we can go one of two directions. We can move on to the mid ranges or we could sum them to see how they sum together. If there's any timing differences or all pass filters or phase you know, differences or polarity differences, anything of that sort, we will see a difference. Um, so you know what, let's just go ahead and do that. Let's, uh, let's sum them play our signal and see how they measure together. All right. So as you can see, it actually, so let me, let me pause for one second. You can see there's no differences. Um, there's one thing I like about the Helix input RTA and how it measures overall volume. Um, it measures relatively. It doesn't actually display differences in SPL from one reading to another. It just takes like the highest and puts it at zero dB or like the like average and puts it at zero dB. Um, this is good for showing differences when summing like we're looking for now, but it is bad for looking for, you know, actual power differences like input voltage differences. So I'm not going to be able to measure the tweeter, like one tweeter, let's say, and then the, you know, let's say I measure the left tweeter and it has no EQ applied. It just has this crossover and, you know, on the right side, they raise the volume to account for, you know, the, the distance of the right tweeter being further away, but they also do not apply EQ and whatever. They can actually look like they're the exact same, but the right tweeter may actually be louder. That is one thing I do not like about the Helix RTA. I wish there was something that you can do like where it can show instead of just a relative like zero dB, you know, my, up to down to like minus 15 and positive 10. I wish it actually showed uh, SPL levels or voltage levels or something of the sort. Um, but you know, again, it's still useful in its own way. Uh, hold on one second. So yeah. Um, now where I'm getting at with this is we combined left and right in theory, if there is no timing differences, no phase differences, no nothing, the summed measurement should have a six decibel increase. It's not showing us that because again, how the input RTA uh, just displays, that's it. So it's a pro and a con depending on how, how you're looking at it and depending on what you're really trying to measure at that given moment. Um, so in this given moment where I'm trying, you know, in the one second where I'm trying to see any, any uh, phase or timing differences, it's good. But if I'm trying to see uh, level differences or EQ. Yeah. Level differences. It's, uh, not ideal. So, but that being said, level differences aren't super important. Um, that's all going to be corrected on the output. Anyway, I would rather have this display how it does, I think versus, uh, 
you know, the other way, because we can see those uh, phase and time differences that show up as dips. Unfortunately, this car doesn't have any all pass timing or polarity discrepancies, so I won't be able to show you that, but is what it is. All right, so moving on to the left mid range, let's go. All right, so the track actually restarted towards the end here. So I'm going to let that fill back in. There we go. Um, I can stop this, pause the track, and just save it to memory four. Now let's do the right mid-range. Start the track over so it doesn't restart. All right, same exact frequency response from left to right. Um, now here's, you don't, in this case, you don't actually need to save both of them if they're pretty much exactly the same. Um, if you wanna save memory slots, you know, if you're doing some uh, complex stuff, in this case, I'm just gonna save it, but you don't really need to if they're exactly the same because you only save them so you have a reference. And if they're both the same, you could just use the same one for the reference. Um, but for the sake of the video, I'm just going to save it. Now let's do summed. So that is, um, yeah. So I'm actually, I'm going to left click these to start removing them. I want to take a look and see. Uh, so it looks like we have a little, whoops, I accidentally did that. Let me fix that. There we go. Looks like we have a little tiny discrepancy. I don't think that's anything though. That might just be, uh, you know, any small stuff like this or like this, it's probably not really there or something you can ignore um an all pass filter or any real timing difference is going to look much more aggressive or different than that um so sorry i have to restart the car again give me one second okay so we have those um all right, on to the uh, mid base. All right, let's get this playing. If that car can shut up, that would be great. I hate American cars. You're so annoying, especially Fords, but this is a Chrysler. But yeah, ranting right now. All right, so there's our left mid base. Let's save that one and let's do our right mid base.
All right. Got the right mid base. Let's uh, let's save that one, and now let's sum them and see what we get. Start the track over. All right. All right, I'll pause that. So yeah, it looks like, uh, like I said, no timing differences, no no phase differences. Um, I think I see maybe a little tiny one up here, but that wouldn't make sense. It's so far out of its frequency range. Um, but yeah, so we have no real timing differences from, you know, right mid base to left mid base and right mid range to right or to left mid range and right tweeter to left tweeter. They are in time, in phase, you know, no all pass filters, no weird wonkiness, uh, no up mixers or anything um, based off of earlier testing that is not in this video. So this is what we are left with. Um, so what I am going to do now is I'm going to measure left as a whole and right as a whole. So let's do left. And let's get this. Uh, I'm going to actually start hiding these and only show nine, six, and three for, you know, summed mid base, summed mid ranged, and sub, summed tweeter. All right, let's, uh, let's get this going. Let me start the track and we'll start measuring. I stopped the track before I stopped the measurement, so it started dropping frequencies. So I'm just going to let it run through this one more time. Something to note for everyone, stop the measurement before you stop your track or else you're going to end up with that. So give this another, you know, run through and, and we'll pause and go from there. All right, there we go. I'm going to save this to memory 10. Now, like I said before, this, the, the, this graph only displays relative. It doesn't display absolute level. Um, so we have our mid base, obviously. So you know what? Let me just hide these so you can see a little better. The mid base is showing much louder than mid range and tweeter. And when we actually look at you know, mid base and mid range and tweeters, it, you know, the mid range and tweeter look like they, they got quieter, but they actually didn't. It's just that the mid base measures so much, you know, has more, uh, level relative to the other ones, but it doesn't actually show in the graph when you measure them individually. It only does it when you measure them together. So, you know, so what we do now is like, okay, so we have more mid base signal than mid range and tweeter. So how do we fix that? Or how do we, what do we do with that? I want to get this as flat as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the amount of input is coming from the mid base. So let's raise this up a little bit. So let's see how this does.
All right, let's stop this. Pause it. I actually want to overwrite this because we made adjustments. So yeah, this is what it looks like now. We're getting uh, a little bit closer, but it looks like the crossovers from the factory kind of overlap in such a bizarre way that it creates a, a peak in you know the you know mid base to mid range crossover area. Um, it's not necessarily good. It's not necessarily bad. It just you know is something we got to take note of, but. Outside of this little area, it's mostly flat across the board. Um, you know, we can, and again, since left and right on mid-base, mid-range end tweeters all measured the same with no differences, we can leave input A and B linked and input C and D linked. We don't have to do individual channel EQ. We can just leave, you know, the pairs of channels linked and just, to, just do mono equalization. So what we can do, you know, let's focus on uh, mid-range right now. We can just fix this guy right here. And we can fix, maybe let's, you know what, let's also do this. Let's bring this down to 35 and bring this up to 45 because it looks like we have a little less tweeter than mid-range. And then here we can drop on the mid mid-range and mid-base so let's do 150 minus four and a half q of three let's just do 150 minus four and a half 150 minus 4.5 all right let's uh let's see how this does now All right, stop the measurement, pause the track, save it. You know, I'm gonna undo these just so I could see a little better and it looks a whole lot better. Um, we still have a little peak here, but this is uh, this is relatively flat. Um, Mid-range, you know, we need to go up a little more here, but just a heads up, your input EQ, your input frequency response doesn't need to be perfect. Um, because at the end of the day, you're still correcting the output anyway. It doesn't, you know, doesn't really need to be perfect. The only thing that needs to be perfect on the input is the timing and the phase and polarity. That's the most important. Um, but the frequency response itself can be, it doesn't have to be linear. It doesn't have to be flat. It, as long as, like I said, time and phase are good, input is in it. You know, and obviously it's full range. It's good. That's it. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, one last thing. Let's see. Um, you know what? I actually want to show you one thing. So you'll see the input RTA on its normal, like default setting will only measure from 40 Hertz, uh, on up. It doesn't measure below 40 Hertz. We actually have to change the frequency range if we want to get, you know, down to 25 hertz. So, you know what? Let's go and see if there's any roll off on the low end. Uh, this is how you can determine, you know, if, if there's any, you know, roll off in your vehicle and if you need to apply a shell filter on the input to gain that low frequency extension back. So, let's see. Let's do this and let's just run this measurement again. And I almost guarantee you we're going to see something because you could see it's starting to happen at 63. Mm. All right. Minimal roll off. Very, very minimal. Pretty much nothing. Um, it looks like just enough just to play it a little bit safe for the factory uh, speakers. But um, let's just say, you know, we wanted to correct 
any, let's just say this roll off is a little bit more aggressive than it's showing. What we can do is we can take, uh, you know, we're on the mid base um, inputs, you know, input E and input F we're adjusting right now. We can do, you know, a low shell filter and, you know, a low shell filter, by the way, affects every frequency below that filter. It's not like parametric where it uh, only affects that area. Just a low shelf is going to do just that. It's going to apply a shelf at frequencies lower than what you are uh, setting it at. So let's just do this and let's, uh, let's run it again. Let's see what we get. Okay, as you can see, we got it perfectly flat. Um, so yeah, in this car, we actually have subwoofer signal that extends all the way down to 20. But, you know, let's, let's bring up two scenarios where you would need to check this and need to fix this. Let's say you have, you know, a popular car that I know this happens in is a, you know, a Honda Accord with the base system. You don't have the premium system. The base system doesn't have a uh, full range signal without crossovers applied in the low end. You need to correct the low end and, you know, cause you can only grab mid base in the front doors, mid base in the rear deck and, you know, tweeters, that's it. That's all you get. If there's no subwoofer signal and they do apply a crossover to all those mid base drivers. And in order to get the, you know, low end extension, you need to fix the, you know, the low end um, roll off on the input. So, Another situation would be where, let's say in this case, where there is a subwoofer, but let's just say, I don't even know how to explain this in technical terms, but there's some cars where we use the subwoofer signal for the subwoofers and we use the mid bass, mid range, and, you know, tweeters for the front stage. But for some reason, in some of those cars, when we do that, the subwoofer doesn't sound right. Something just seems off, whether... I don't, I don't even know. I'm not even going to begin to think about what could cause that. But sometimes we actually use a corrected front or rear signal for the subwoofer instead of the subwoofer signal because it just sounds better. It's, you know, on the same, it's timed to the same. It's in, you know, it's going to be the same phase. It's much easier to work with. Um, so yeah, or even if it doesn't sound bad on its own, but when you play them together, you cannot get your, your subwoofer uh, in phase with your front stage. And it could be because again, they have some crazy, you know, signal delay applied to the front stage of the subwoofer in the factory signals, or they have some weird all pass filter or, uh, FIR filters or something of that sort going on. You can just use the corrected front or rear signal to make things predictable. Um, so yeah, you know, it looks like, um, we are good with the left side as a whole. So you know what I'm going to do? This is, all it right here. I'm going to click transfer routing to virtual channel A. And you'll see virtual channel A has those same settings applied. You'll see before I had 33, 33, and 33, and it transferred all of my, you know, mixed signal and those EQ filters. You don't, the, the EQ filters, when you apply them, you don't need to transfer them. But this is just a quick way to transfer, uh, you know, easy easy, uh, you know, mixing settings. So yeah, moving on to, you know what, let's just do the same with this. So we're going to do 20, you know, I don't even need to transfer this. I can just copy it since we know left and right is the same. And we already applied our EQ since the, the sides were paired. And that's, uh, that's pretty much it. I already know we don't need to do EQ to the subwoofer or anything like that. I already measured it before this video. So we're not going to go ahead and do that. So that is pretty much it for our input gains, our input EQ, our summing, everything like that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and save this. And now we are going to get into uh, 
output tuning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play, you know, a song again, and we can raise our output levels back to normal and see what they, you know, see if we have enough volume. So I'm going to unmute everything right now and adjust. All right, I was just taking a quick listen to it, putting the volume up. Um, so yeah, I'm going to pause this. So now everything is good. I'm going to right click and, you know what, cancel that. I'm going to hit reset, reset link group. So I'm going to unlink everything. There we go. Um, so now we're going to get into tuning. Um, so give me, give me one second to set this up. I'm going to mute all outputs except for uh, the front left tweeter. That's where I'm going to start. And actually, I lied. I am going to do time alignment. Um, so I'm going to hit shift T to bring up the automatic time alignment uh, menu. So how you use this feature is pretty simple. Like I said, sometimes it just doesn't work well because it's not that it doesn't work well it'll either work or it won't work like work as in it'll finish the site finish the um sequence and it'll give you your settings or not work as in it won't be able to make it through the sequence because it needs high frequency information to all speakers in order to get proper impulse responses a lot of times the subwoofer just can't produce it and it won't be able to read it. So it won't be able to do it for you. So what I'm going to do just to make sure I get through this is uh, I'm just going to uncheck the subwoofer. I don't want to measure those. I don't want to, you know, deal with it. Um, now, what we're going to do is it's using our left mid range as the reference channel. So what we're going to do we're going to measure the distance from the reference channel to our listening position. I like to measure to my nose. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I have my tape measure. I know you can't see me. I look like a jackass right now. But uh, I am at 41 inches from the mid-range to my nose. So I'm going to go over here. Oh, wait. It's centimeters. Motherfucker. All right. Hold on one second. Um... Give me one second. 41 inches to centimeters is 104.14. All right. So now we're going to go to our source. You know, we're going to play. Um, actually, with this, you want to unmute all of your outputs so it can do its thing. I know we don't need sub. I'm going to unmute them anyway. Um, unmute them, make sure your volume is up. You do need to do this with it pretty loud. So I'm going to have mine up and then we need to play our, you know, play the audio tech Fisher, um, timing, uh, track. Let me see if I have it in this playlist. Here it is. It's going to be the time measurement click track. This is what it sounds like. I'm going to pause it quick. So. Um, hold on. Sorry, I'm just setting my microphone input sensitivity. Um, sometimes it doesn't read my microphone very well, uh, because I'm using an interface. Maybe just, you know, the software doesn't like this interface, um, is what it is. But once we have everything set and ready to go, you're going to play your track and then just hit start and hold the microphone. I hold it to the very tip of my nose. I actually put the tip of the microphone on the tip of my nose and I just wait till it goes through and does its thing. So we're going to start that right now.
So as you can see, uh, it actually wasn't loud enough to get, you know, it was struggling on the left tweeter and it struggled too much on the right tweeter. Um, so we have to raise the volume even more. So let's, uh, let's just go up in volume. I'm going to raise the, the input sensitivity on my mic even more, but I don't want it to clip, but you know what? It is what it is. Let's start over. Yeah, as you can see, when I'm playing it, it's like hardly giving me any signal. I, I don't know why, but it is what it is. Let's, let's get it started. All right. Um, I don't think it did my rear right. Let me see if I had uh, everything checked. Huh. It doesn't even give me the option for it. Why is... I don't know if you see this. You know, you know if you look... Front left high, front left mid, front left low, front right high, front right mid, front right low, center, center, rear left, but no rear right. Um, let me see if something's up. Hold on. Input. Hmm. Oh, it's because we had both of these named rear left full on accident. Uh, all right, so we're going to run through it one more time. Um, sorry about that. Another trick, if you can't get enough output uh, in this situation, is to just boot. Actually, you know what? I'm not even going to do that. I am just going to raise this input temporarily. But as you can see, once I raised the volumes and you know sensitivity on my mic, it it went through it much easier. So let's uh, let's just do this again. Shift T. Um, we have. Measure distance is 104. Why is it? Um, okay. So let's, uh, let me start the track and we'll, uh, we'll start over. All right, we're done with the automatic time measurement. It's really that simple. So let me just go and play a uh, center. Let me lower this volume real quick and play a center track. Center. And for the most part, it is centered up. It's obviously not perfect since we didn't do any uh, levels or equalization yet. But I am fully confident. You know, let's look at uh, the distances. Let's see what it came up with. Just let's reference it just to uh, see what we got. Let's see how close it was for the sake of it. Tweeter. It is within half an inch. And that half an inch can be a difference because it's firing into the windshield. And again, the Distance might not be the right measurement. Mid-range, uh, same. Uh, yeah, also within half an inch. Mid-base is 38. Let's see. Yeah, 38.9. So that's within an inch. 
Um, and I'm not even measuring perfectly accurate. I'm just going right to the grill. I don't know exactly where it is. Um, right tweeter is 57. That Yeah, so that's close. Um, Mid-range is the same thing pretty much. Yeah, also pretty close. Mid base is measuring 56 inches. Yeah, 56 and a half. Yeah, this is uh this is pretty much spot on. Now, as you can see, we didn't do the subwoofer. I'm gonna do that manually. I already know in this car it's not gonna be able to work because there's no high frequency signal in the subwoofer signal. So it's I would be wasting my time trying to battle that. Um so once I'm done tuning the front stage and the sub separately. I am going to, you know what? I'm just gonna measure the distance to the subwoofer and put that in. Let's see. And we are at 90 inches or 80, 88 inches. So, all right, big, big truck. Um, so let's do 90 inches and boom time alignment is done set confirmed by impulse and the fact that we did impulse response uh with the software and it, it lined up like perfectly or nearly perfectly with measurements um with the tape measure we know there was actually no signal delayed applied from you know between mid base to mid range and mid range to tweeter um so yeah now we're gonna start uh, tuning the outputs. Um, it's actually been a while since I've used this method, so I'm going to have to brush up really quickly. Um, give me one second. All right, so what I'm going to do, so I went through my settings, you know, I'm going to keep it pretty simple, keep the resolution to 112, I'm going to keep it uh, max deviation, you know what, yeah, let's do half a dB, um, and then max iteration is 5, 10 seconds per iteration, max deviation, and this is the custom curve I'm going to start with, and then from there I'm going to adjust by ear. I know this isn't normal, but it's where I'm going to start and then adjust by ear, like I said. So let's go back. All right. Um, let me go back into settings really quick. So I'm going to go over each uh, each setting really quick. Um, the smoothing, fast or slow or normal. This is going to be, you know, this is self-explanatory. When the RTA is taking averages, it's just going to display... Um, you know, the, the fast setting is it's going to be taking averages fast. If you do slow, it's going to be taking them slow. If it's normal, it's going to be normal. I'm going to do fast. Uh, measurement time, how long, how long do you want the averages to take? Like how much time do you want to gather averages for? I'm going to use 15 seconds. The resolution at your smoothing, you know what? I'm going to go down to 24th octave. Um, the style line, I hate using the bar style. Uh, personal preference. Um, Adjust frequency limits to selected channel filters. This, I'm pretty sure, has to do with if you're measuring only a tweeter, it's only going to adjust the frequencies within the tweeter range. Um, and, you know, same with mid-range and same with mid-bass and same with sub, yada, yada, yada. Um, whatever you have your crossover set at, it's not going to adjust outside of that, which is a good and a bad thing. Um, let me just read this. Let me look into this for a second. Yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna really dive into this one too much. Deviation, I think this explains itself. You know, self-explanatory how much uh, deviation you are going to allow in your equalization from the measurement. 
uh, how much max boost and how much you're going to allow it to boost the EQ to hit your target curve. Um, max iterations during an auto set configuration, five, you know, time per iteration, 10 seconds. It, these are all, again, self-explanatory reference curve. I have mine set to custom. Like I said, very straightforward. Now, inside of here, you have start analyzer, start measurement, how much time is left, and uh, how you want it to uh, go about tuning, you know, your tuning mode. Set EQ is the very basic one where it adjusts the graphic equalization. Um, auto set is where, actually, this is where uh, you just hit it and it does it manually, I think. Let me just read really quick. Um, uh, yeah, this is where you would measure your whole system and just do a quick, like super quick and dirty full system EQ. Auto set, same thing, but it does it automatically. Tune EQ is where things get uh, more complex and, you know, it does parametric equalization per channel. Now, how we're going to do this is let me go back here. I am going to, if I want to measure only my left tweeter, I need to make sure my left tweeter is selected. Whoops, give me one second. Then I'm going to need to make sure it's not linked with anything. If everything is linked, it is going to measure everything uh, that's linked. I also need to make sure it's the only speaker that's playing. So let's go back to RTA. And now use band from 3 to 29. This means it's going to use EQ band 3 through 29 or anywhere in between those, depending on how many bands it comes up with, to place those bands. This is actually genius. This is actually how I go about tuning. I don't use bands 1 through 3 or I don't use the last band because there's special filters inside those bands that I don't want to touch and they know the same thing. Seems like we're on the same page. Good stuff, guys. Um... One thing I don't understand about this uh, this software and the auto, you know, the tune EQ thing is there's always some weird little blip around the crossover frequency. I don't know what it is. I'm just going to ignore it. Um, what is this? I don't know what this is. Low pass filter plus. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Okay. I know what this is. So over here we have high pass filter and low pass filter. Uh, sorry guys, like I said, I haven't used this measurement and tuning method in a while. I still use Room EQ Wizard and do things manually myself. Um, not to say that this isn't a good or a great way to go about it. It's just something I'm used to. It's something I'm comfortable with. It's just how I do things. Um, so sorry if I'm not 100% familiar with everything in here. It's uh, you know been a while. But what this is going to do is I'm pretty sure... This is adjusting the crossover based on, uh, you know, acoustic response, not electrical response. So we can go in and change it to match. Um, so we don't have to, you know, EQ a bunch outside of the, uh, you know, that crossover range. But, you know, if you know what I'm talking about, great. If you don't, it's probably something we don't get into right now. Like I said, we're keeping this very simple. This isn't going to be an advanced uh you know, tuning method video. Um, so I'm not even going to get into it. If you know where I was going with that small snippet of information, great. If you don't ignore it, let's not, I'm not going into it. Um, all right. So I have my crossovers for my tweeter from 4,000 and up. So on the RTA, it's going to be 4,000 through 20,000. Um, so here, here's what we do. We're going to play our pink noise. We're going to start the analyzer. Then we're going to start the measurement. We're going to be moving our microphone around our head while it's taking the measurement. Once the measurement is done, we'll, we'll stop the track. And then we'll click calculate um, calculation and let it do its thing. And we'll go from there. So let's start that. Whoops. I got to play pink noise. Hold on. Oh, another thing we'll have to do is, let me pause it. Another thing we'll have to do is adjust the um, microphone and curve sensitivity. So you'll see what I'm talking about in a second.
All right, it's adjusted, and let's start the measurement. All right, you can see the uh, measurement stopped, it completed. The red line here is the analyzer, but the white is the measurement that is saved. You don't need to worry about the red, but if you wanna stop it, you can. Um, all right, so this is what we, we have here. So if, you know, see, here's the problem. So if we actually look, it's going to EQ from 4,000 to 20,000, but below 4,000, we have some crazy peaks and dips. So I am personally going to go from one and a half. They actually recommend you don't do this, I think, because it keep, makes things complicated. Um, I, again, I complicated or not, you know, there's you got to tune correctly. So we're going from 1,600 all the way up. Um, actually, you know what? This thing is rolling off hard at 16K, so let's not even try to EQ above that. Let's just go to 16K as our max. And uh, so it has a measured deviation of 9.6 dB between those frequency ranges along our target curve. And by the way, channel target or, you know, not, I would go, if you're measuring speaker by speaker, go with channel filter target mode. This is what you want. You don't want to measure your whole reference curve to one speaker. You know, you would only do this if you're measuring your whole system. Um, so yeah, let's go there. Click Tune EQ Calculation, does its thing, and, oh, sorry, and you hit Set EQ. Wow, that is a lot of, a uh, lot of EQ. Um, let me see if I can not do it like that. Let's do from there to there, Tune EQ. Mm. So I can't redo stuff. Um, once it's already calculated, you have to redo the measurement, it looks like. Um, but you know what? This is the EQ we ended up with. It, you know, I didn't set my parameters in a way that optimized to get it to have the least amount of filters possible, which frankly doesn't really matter too much. As long as you're hitting the, the target curve, the sum of the filters is the sum always. So... You know, but it doesn't really leave me for much room to do manual adjustment besides in the virtual channels. Um, and no tweeter really needs this much EQ. But again, I, I just didn't take the time to really optimize it. But I'm also nitpicking. I'm measuring with 124th octave here, um, which is very, very high. So, you know, what? let's do let's go to maybe 112th and go back. You know, let's just do this again. Let me go and reset these, uh, this EQ. And we'll do another run on this left tweeter. Let's go from, you know, let's ignore this hump down here. Let's just go from 25 to 16. Calculate it. That is much closer and just set it. There we go. Only, you know, how many bands is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 bands of EQ. And let's go ahead and just measure it again just to see how it did. Let me pause this for a second. You saw how it said just measure. If you don't hit just measure in order to just verify your measurement, it will reset your EQ. So keep that in mind. You know what? I want to make sure I get this... Uh, 
pretty big peak out at a, you know, a little bit below 2K. So I'm gonna go ahead and do another measurement and do it, adjust the frequency range a bit since we have much more to play with now in here. So we're going to go from, let's say, 1K up to 16K. And let's set it. All right, still good. Let's take another measurement and see how it did. Remember, just the measure, we're going to click. Yeah, much better. That is much better. It's not perfect, but we only did one quick little thing and, you know, it's never going to be perfect out of the gate because of just how a car responds with so many reflections. You know, EQ is never going to be perfect the first time, but this is very, very close. It did a very good job. Um, all right, so let's do our right tweeter. And... All right. All right, let's go again. We have a big hump right below 2K, so we want to cut that out. So we're going to go from 1,000 and again, 16,000 and up, drops off like a cliff. So I'm going to cut it at 16,000. Let's calculate it and set EQ. There we go. I'm going to measure one more time, see how it came out. Oh. There's one thing I forgot to show you. You also have to make sure you have... The right channel selected if you don't if you have a different channel selected that's where it's going to apply the eq so i kind of screwed up there so now i have to redo the left tweeter and the right tweeter so uh let's do that sorry All right, there we go, measure it again. All right, looks good. Um, let's do right tweeter and make sure we select it this time sorry Calculate it, set it, measure one more time. Yeah, looks great. Not perfect, like I said, but it's very, very good uh, relative to what it was before. So I'm going to minimize that, move on to the mid range, and now I'm going to just blaze through the rest of this uh, setup real quick no real explanation needed i don't think so i'm going to blaze through this real quick and just show you you know the process
actually there is one thing to note as you saw I did adjust it um, I adjusted the level of it so we can go and adjust this and I'll just go in once they're all individually EQ'd I can uh, adjust the levels in the drivers you know on the output channels later on so for this one we'll do you know 200 to oof we have some crazy high end roll off that's going to need to be fixed um, we're not going to get into what needs to be boosted, what doesn't, we're not going to do that right now. We're just going to EQ it, get it to its target curve, and, you know, I'm going to show you how to just use the features as opposed to what exactly is 100% correct and what you do in every situation. Um, let's do EQ. Okay. So actually, this is exactly where I can use these features. So before, you know, our crossover is set over here and our measurement obviously measures below it. And in order to get them to match up, I need to drop it, you know, minus 740 hertz or so. So what I can do to counteract it is bring it up 740 hertz or, you know, octaves work a little differently. So I'm, I'm just going to bring it up a thousand hertz. Uh, remember, frequencies don't behave linearly, so technically you'd have to do it um, per octave. I'm just going to guess and bring it up to 5,000. And we're going to go back to RTA, put this back to normal, and uh, see how it does. I don't expect it to be perfect, by the way. So you can see I had to bring it from, you know, I had to adjust the crossover up to 5,000, but now the L, the low pass shows 5,000 here. In order to hit the target of 4,000, I have to bring it to minus 1,000. It actually looks a lot better. It's close. Up top, there is still some roll off. I'm not going to worry about it right now, but uh, yeah, that, that, that worked perfectly. So let's uh, keep going. Again, let's go from 200 and up to maybe 8K. Boom. This one we're going to have to bring it up to. Let's bring it up to 5,000 also. This is just to hit the target crossover of 4,000 to get it to mate up to the tweeter properly. Uh, let's do one more confirmation measurement. We're at 5,000 now. Let's bring it down to 4. As you can see, it reset everything. It wouldn't let me to do just measure again after I made adjustments, so I had to do this EQ over again. But is what it is. Let's get that applied and uh, do it again.
just redid it because I accidentally didn't get down below 200. Uh, I only went to 400. We still have this big peak over here that I wanted to get rid of. Uh, let's go to 8 to 2. There we go. Now let's measure again. Very close again. Let's keep going. Left mid base.
Hold on one second. All right, just finished up running through all of my EQ stuff. Like I said, I was adjusting levels. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play um, left as a whole and right as a whole and just balance those out manually. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the RTA. I'm just going to turn that off and, you know, I'm going to, uh, you know, just balance them to the target level. I'm going to play the whole thing, uh, play every play just left as a whole, play right as a whole and then everything and just balance it all out. So I actually see right here, let me stop the analyzer quick, right here, we got a dip, and right here we got a dip. That's actually where our crossovers are, so I'm willing to bet. We gotta flip the mid-range out of phase or something. Let's, let me just check by ear. Yeah, mid, mid base to mid range is out of phase. Tweeter to mid is in phase. I'm not sure. I mean, this is probably showing up as a dip up top because of how, you know, high frequency behaves in a vehicle due to reflections and you're not getting as much direct energy. There's not as much energy in our measurement versus what you hear. So I'm going to ignore this up here, but this was definitely a concern. I flipped polarity on the mid base and uh, I'll have to match it on the right, obviously, but we got to see what's going on first before we do that. So let's measure. All right, it wasn't letting me uh, do just measure for some reason, but I used the analyzer to just take a look and yeah, it, it filled that hole. So this is uh, this actually seems to be all leveled out. I'm gonna adjust by ear after the fact if anything sounds off. Let's move to the right side. So the uh, the right mid bass actually sounds normal when it's in polarity. Like the, or actually, sorry, the crossover sounds right when the mid bass is in. So let me actually play mid bass and mid bass and see if maybe something got wired wrong or they purposely wired something different from the factory. And uh, let's just see. Oh yeah. Um, all right. So that has to be out. Maybe it's the mid ranges. Let's play the mid ranges now. Um, again, this isn't an advanced tuning video, so I'm not really going to explain what I'm hearing and what I'm doing. So, you know, if you can pick up what I'm doing and what I'm listening for, great. If not, this is for a later video. Sorry. So they're in phase two. So I wonder, I don't know what the hell's going on at the crossover. 
Um... I got a problem going on acoustically that I'm not going to be able to figure out by ear very quickly or with, uh, frankly, with the basic RTA of uh, the Audio-Tech Fisher software. So I'm going to handle that uh, after the fact using Rumi Q Wizard, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to video that. There's no real sense. Like I said, this is a simple video. Um, so yeah, this is, this is pretty much it. It seems like we had a long video here. We are at an hour and 40 minutes long. Jesus Christ. Um, okay. So, yeah. Sorry for that honking. Julio's doing a remote start right now. Um, so, yeah. That uh, that pretty much concludes this video. Um, if you have any questions regarding it, obviously ask. Hopefully, I did a great job explaining. This video wasn't planned, so I kind of did it on the fly. So, I'm sorry if I sounded a little, you know, mixed up or not prepared. It, you know, frankly, I wasn't prepared. Like I said, I was doing it and I was like, oh, I should you know, make a video. Uh, if you need clarification on anything, just let me know. Or if you want me to go into more detail about certain things that you saw in this video, just let me know. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching. Always thanks for the support. And uh, I'll see you guys later.